Hello everybody, I'm Alicia. Welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. I designed this necklace yesterday and I was inspired to make this necklace because, I don't know if you've been watching all my videos lately, but I recently did a bead haul and I got 6,000 ball head pins and they are much longer than the ones I've used in the past. It was the first time I've ever gotten head pins that were that long and so I had this idea to make this necklace and I imagined a necklace that looked like it was from a different country from far far away and I want it to be really cool so uh, I designed this yesterday and I'm extremely happy with how it turned out I worked in all one color which I don't normally do if you watch most of my videos then you guys know that I love to play with color it's a huge part of my design creation but for this one I decided to stay with all one color and I really love it because there's patterns on these beads are swirly and the stripes it's, it's really beautiful so anyways I posted yesterday a picture on Facebook and Instagram asking your guys advice on what color combination I should use in beads so here is the post and I can't believe this, but 121 people commented on this picture telling me what color to use. So I ended up going with the yellow because everybody, well, most of the people said yellow. And even on Instagram, everybody was like, yellow, yellow, yellow. So I'm going to go with the yellow. But I started to play with the beads last night, lay them out, and I discovered that I was going to have to remove one of the beads. So looking back at the picture, I realized that my red rondelles were too close in size to these blue uh, crackled agate beads. So I had to remove the blue cracket, crackle agate beads, and um, I had to move these black and white beads up to this row, so then I needed a larger bead at the bottom. So I went through my stash and I found these here. I think I got these from Joann's a long time ago on sale, but it's been some time. I can't remember. But anyways, I think these are Czech. They're really wild. These beads look like they're from a different country, which they probably are. And uh, I thought these would be cool in the necklace. Now, here's the thing. Um, I have 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 millimeter beads here and I actually measured these with my digital caliper last night and I discovered that they're not actually 12 they're 11 millimeter and I measured these and they are like almost 13 millimeter they're like 12 something so um I hope this is going to work let's go ahead and talk about the materials you're going to need so you're going to need head pins and by the way Everything I'm using here is from BB Craft. I will have links for everything down there in the description bar. So um, the first thing you're going to need is head pins. And I'm using head pins from BB Craft. And you're going to need Rolo Chain. And I'm also using Rolo Chain from BB Craft. And I found this gigantic spool. I swear it weighs like 5 pounds of chain at BB Craft. This stuff is incredible. And the links aren't soldered. Which when I ordered this I was kind of unsure if I should get it because they're not soldered. But when playing with this... Thank God they weren't soldered because I would have so much wasted chain. It really is good that they were open. It just helped me out a lot. You're also going to need 20 gauge wire. And this is also from BB Craft. You are going to need bead cones. And these I got from BB Craft. And before I've actually got them at a craft store. But they were kind of pricey. I only got a couple of them. And at BB Craft you can get a box full of of different colors and these are all the colors I always work with the antiqued brass silver copper and gold they're gorgeous I love these so much and I've actually used these a few times in my videos already you're also going to need beads in five different sizes now this here I forgot what this is called I think it was some kind of an agate bead. This is from BB Craft, okay? It comes in this container, just like this. I'll put a link for it down there, and you'll, you'll see when you open up the link how all five sizes come in this box. So there's 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 millimeter beads. But like I said, I measured these, and they're kind of like 11. It's like 11.3 millimeter or 11.4. Strange size. And um, I do have... 12 of each bead except for the last row right here I have 11 of those all right now 
depending on how the design goes, you may um, add an extra pin, you may take a couple out, it just depends on how it lays as we work on this. And I also, um, for this one here, I'm using these rondelles, which are gorgeous. They have this really pretty bronze color on the one side. I'm using the red ones there, but I love all of these. This one here is to die for, and so is that green. Man, they're gorgeous. Again, that's at BB Craft, and all the beads come in these containers. I did not put them in these containers. And I'm also using uh, Pitcher Jasper, and I have used these beads so many times in my tutorial already. But um, right there is the Pitcher Jasper. And I'm also using um, rondelles for this necklace. So this one here, I did all round beads, but this one, I'm going to mix it up, and I'm going to be using rondelles and rounds and faceted rounds, and I really hope that these work for my project, but we'll see how it goes. So these are the th three by four millimeter um, rondelles that I'm using. There's yellow, but when you order these, they come in a pack of mixed colors. And I just cut mine off the strands and bagged them like that. And you're going to need jump rings and lobster claw class. And as you can see, I didn't put mine on this necklace yet, so that's something I have to do later on. So uh, you will need tools also. I'm using wire cutters. I'm using flat chain nose pliers because this chain that I'm working it with, because of how it's made, it's really hard to open with chain nose pliers. I have to use flat nose. And I'm also using regular chain nose pliers and round nose pliers. And I think that's it. So let's go ahead and start designing this necklace. All right, you want to start by taking pieces of chain and laying them out like this, three in a row. Now, I did not measure these. These were scraps from the necklace I just made. I just didn't connect them back together into one long piece. So um, um, you don't have to have them be a certain size because we're going to be adjusting them as we go. But just to give you guys an idea, um, two of them are seven and a half inches long, and the other one's like nine inches long maybe 10, but um, that really doesn't matter because matter, we're going to be adjusting them to make them even shorter. So you just want to lay some chain it like this. Now, one thing I found that was really helpful for this is to take all of your beads and put them directly onto the head pins like this, okay? And I'm going to start by, by, by the way, there is 4, 6, 8, 10. We're not going to be using the 12 till later on. What I like to do is I like to go like this, okay? and I lay the beads down like that and then I take my head pin and I do kind of want these to be in the center I try to center them I start in the middle doing this and I pass through the chain I have my four millimeter bead on the top I pass through the chain because I want the four millimeter to be on the top chain I go through the six millimeter the chain my eight millimeter the chain and then through my ten millimeter bead Okay, and I slide this down. Now I'm going to have to pick this up because I have to put my um, eye on here. Now, when I first started doing this, there is a cat here. I wanted to do wire-wrapped loops, and I tried it, but it was not working. So I realized that I had to do just a regular loop, which made this process faster and easier. But um, something I realized I really had to do, this is very important, when you go to make your wire loop, you want to have a lot of slack in this wire, okay? You want to leave like an eighth of an inch of exposed wire right here because if you make it tight, your chain will not lay properly and this is going to bunch up really bad. So do you see how mine is laying flat? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to about right here, okay? Almost in the middle of my, um. Pliers, and I'm going to make a bend all right so I have this there almost like I'm going to do a wire wrapped loop but I'm not and then I'm going to make my loop and I do make a large loop for this because I need that space to accommodate oh no I just went through the chain I need that space to um accommodate my very bottom row okay so I make a big loop like that get my cutters 
And the nice thing about this is you can adjust it more if you have to. If, we, if you have too much slack right here, you can always adjust it more because you cut enough wire and you made a big loop. Alright, so I'm just going to close this just like that. Now when I take the chain and I open it up, do you see how that extra slack I had on the wire disappears because the chain fills it up. You, you need this for movement. That's why I'm doing that, okay? So now I'm going to take this and lay it back down again. And this is where I have to zoom in and make sure you guys see what I'm doing. I'm going to take another pin holding the 4 millimeter. I'm going to slide the beads off like this. I'll zoom in so you can see. So you're going to want to skip links. So I'm going through this link. I'm going to skip this link and go through the next one. Okay, so there's one link skipped. And then on the next row, I actually, I hope you could see this, yeah? It's harder, it looks better on camera than it does in real life. <laughs> I'm going to skip two links. So I'm going to go through this link here, okay? And then through my bead. And then on the last row, I have to skip three links. And you do kind of want them to lay good. Do you see how this one's straight down this way? And then this link is laying that way, and then this one's going that way. This one here, you can't help this area, but they're going to twist. But this one is the most important. You have to make sure that they're laying properly in this row. And then I'm going to go through this bead here. And I'll pick this up. So do you see what I mean, how they're laying? You want it to look just like this. Okay, so now I'm going to make a loop on this one, and I will be fast forwarding through some of this because I know I'm, I'm repeating myself. I know I know it gets uh, long. Okay, so right here, bend my wire, make my big loop. I really love this necklace design. I feel like it's from a department store kind of look, but it kind of looks like it's from an, uh, another country, like it's Moroccan or something. All right, I'm going to trim this wire off, and then I'm going to make sure this is closed. Okay. I'm going to open this up again and show you guys. After the first few pins, it lays better. And make sure your pins are really straight when you start doing this. Okay, so, see when I hold the chain? See, that extra wire disappears. It's because we need all this movement in here. All right, let's do this again. So again, go like this, hold the four millimeter bead, slide the beads off like this. I'm going to zoom in again. I'll show you guys how to do this a few times and then I'll fast forward. I'm going to pass through the top link here, skipping one link, going through the six millimeter. Then I'm going to skip two links and go through my eight millimeter, skip three links and go through the ten. just like this. Okay, that's what it should look like. Again, you want like an eighth of an inch space there. And if you have too much slack, because I did have one pin that I made too long somehow, I don't know how, but I did. And I went back and I was able to make it shorter always better to make it longer than to make it too short. I actually use this part of the pliers so much and it's actually not like part, you know, of 
the work but because of how it's shaped right there it just works great all right looks good so how you know if you need to redo it is when you pass your pins through if this is really like twisted if it's if, if this is not laying flat then you know that you have to um, make your pin longer that's what I discovered but mine looks really good now this will bunch just a little bit when you do add the bottom row see that right there can't help that it lays beautifully on the neck though but um, I did have just a little bit of bunching and it was only this bottom row that made it do that so I'm really hoping that these uh, beads that I'm using for this one is going to work. So I'm going to do this again, taking my beads here, and by the way I am working on the right side, I will have to go and do this side, I just started in the center to be safe, I'm going to zoom in again, going in through a link here, I'm skipping the first link. Skip two links in this row, go through the rondelle, skip three links, and through the speed here. Just like that. Looks great. I'm going to make my loop. By the way, I thought that this would also look cool with pearls, so I know that a lot of you guys love to work with glass pearls, and you can buy those pearls in a ton of different colors. And I think it would look really cool if you could do like an ombre look, where it went from like light to dark beads. Okay, let's see. So you do want to work on both sides of the chain. You kind of want to center it in the necklace. I'm going to do this one more time with you guys and then I'm going to fast forward through it. I'm going to go on this side over here. I'm going to pass through this link and then my first bead. This link. This bead. And this one. Okay. And again, you want like an eighth of an inch of extra wire there. Cut that. I never cover my wire over. You know why? I wear glasses. And, you know, it just prevents it from flying into my eyes. I did cut this loop really big. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller there. Apologize for all the banging. I have a glass tabletop. All right. And there we go what it looks like so far. I love this color. I've always kind of like been afraid of working with yellow, but I'm challenging myself and I'm working on it now. And I really love this yellow bead because it's not solid yellow. It actually has like a bronzy color on it. It's really pretty. So I'm going to keep going doing this and I'm going to fast forward and make sure that you have slack on every wire you do. That's very important in order for this to lay properly. I am so bummed out right now. So I wanted to film me putting all of the pins with the beads through the chain and fast forward through that 
for you guys, but I guess my camera stopped filming or maybe I accidentally stopped recording it. I don't know what happened. But anyways, I wanted to do that and I didn't get that footage. So um, what's going on right now is I'm kind of worried that these beads wouldn't work right here because they are bigger than my other beads in the first necklace I made. And so I took a scrap piece of bead stringing wire and I passed it through the loops that I made with the beads in between just to see if it was going to work before I went to my metal wire. And it does. It works. And it lays beautifully. And I think it looks even better than my first necklace. So I'm super excited. I was really worried this wasn't going to work. So um, I'm just going to pull this out. It's just for temporary. I like to do things like that sometimes to make sure um, things are going to work. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pass my wire through here. I'm going to be using 20 gauge wire. I first thought when I made this that I should do a smaller gauge, like 24. But um, I'm like, nah, probably shouldn't. It's too thin. It's not going to lay right. It's going to bend easily. So I like to go like this and curve the wire because if it's straight you're going to have a really hard time passing through here. You need it to be curved so you can just, you know, go on through. And you just want to lay your beads like this in the holes in between and pass your wire through. And I will fast forward to this because, you know, it's pretty simple as you can see. I'm just going through the beads and through the wire loops that I made. Alright, so I just passed it through as you saw. I kind of used the chain nose pliers to help me feed it through. It looks great. I think I'm gonna... Do I cut it first? I don't think I cut it last time. I'm gonna take my, um round those pliers. So I'm going to make a big loop here. Okay. Just like that. And then pull this wire so it looks like this. And I have this going straight. And now I'm going to cut this wire over here. I might have cut too much, but it's better to cut too much than not enough. Yeah, I cut way too much. Way too much. I still cut too much. Yes? Yes, way too much. Alright, looks like I got it now. Okay, let's see, let's see. How does it look? It looks good. I am so happy it worked out. This really does look like it's from another country. It looks Moroccan or something. Maybe I should call it Moroccan beaded necklace or uh, I don't know. I'll see. And this eye pin over here, I wonder, see, I worry if... The, if this will slide off. The other one I the other one I did, I made this eye pin, I made the uh, loop shorter. So I kind of feel like I should do that on this one. I'm just gonna cut that there. And do I use this pliers or this one? Let's see. I told you guys I suffer from my jewelry falling apart paranoia. So, I'm always thinking if if I do this or that, will it make it stronger? Okay. That's good. Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing to this side. Just a little bit. Take a little bit off right there. Okay, now we're going to adjust our chain. Now what I have to do is merge 
three chains into one chain so I could put on this bead cone and I wish that I remembered what I did last night. I think it was six links on the side. I'm going to try it and see how it goes. Okay, so you want to make sure that your your links are straight here. It's very important. And I'm going to count um, six links that I need to stay in the chain. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to grab the seventh one and open that link. If you want, you can cut yours. Okay. I'm just going to put that to the side. And I do like to take a pin. That one doesn't have a fall on it. I like to take a pin and just help me see what's going on here. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this is going to connect on to that ring. Yep. So I have to come over here and I have to remove links. So I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to open the seventh link to turn it. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my chain here and I have to open this chain and I have to connect it to the center chain. First I have to make sure it's straight again. Tell you what, this is really hard to do with just regular chain nose pliers because of how this chain, this chain link is actually flat. It's, it's the weirdest. Here, I'll show you. See the metal itself? It's actually a flat piece of wire that's curled up, and it, it's so hard to open this stuff. Because normally the Rolo chain I've used in the past has round, like, wire, but this one's flat. So I'm taking and opening up this link here. Okay, and now I have to get this straight. And I'm going to pass through, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have to pass through, is it this one that I did? I'm just going to go with this. I'm just going to go with it and see what happens. I should have made notes last night on what I did, but I didn't. Okay. Now I have to go to my other chain, which is hiding from me. I'm going to do the same with this one. Is this one right? One, two, three, four, five links. Am I missing a link? One, two, three, four, five. I'm missing a link. So I'm just going to take this link over here that's open then. And I'm going to connect it to this one. I don't know how I did that. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna make sure I'm doing this right. So I'm counting the links after this head pin here, I'm counting the open links. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so I somehow removed the sixth link. I thought I opened the seventh one. So now I'm going to connect this to this here, and I'm going to pass through the same link that has two links going through it. So see right there? That one has two. I'm going to pass through that link there. Make sure you grip this really good because it's going to want to jump out of your hands. Close it. 
Okay, and that's what I have. Just like that. Do you see how straight my links are? Now I'm going to slide this on and pray that it looks good. Yes, that's what I want. I think that this really helps it make it look like it's from another country. So now I have to do the same thing to this side that I did to this side. Okay, now I'm going to do the chain and I'm going to be doing wire wrapped loops and the reason why I have this bead here, first of all, it looks better. Second of all, this bead cone is just going to slide up and down the chain so to make it stationary I have to put a bead here and I like to do one of each bead on the side of the necklace. I feel like it really improves the look of the necklace. I first was just going to do chain then I realized I got to put a bead there to stop that from sliding and then I just did uh, the other four that are in the necklace and it makes it look really cool. So I'm going to show you how to do this. You want to make sure that you pass your first bead through a certain link so that it sits right. I have a pin here making sure this is straight. I'm going to put on my big bead. Okay. And I'm going to go like this, center the bead. Okay, I'm going to make wire wrapped loops. So I'm going to bend my wire here and then I'm going to make my loop. Just like that. Okay, I have to open this a little bit to pass my chain through. I'm going to hold this up. I'll zoom in so you can see because it's heavy. All right. Darn it. Okay, I have my cone on here. Sliding this up. I want you to see what I'm doing. Okay, this is what it looks like. Slide it down. See that link right there? The one that is like hidden? I want to get my wire through there. It's going to be a little tricky at first, but we're going to do it. We're going to win. We're not going to let it beat us. Okay have to move it like this slide it around there we go I'm gonna get my where are they right here I'm gonna zoom back out I'm going to make a wire wraps loop now so I'm gonna hold on to my eye pin like this okay hold it like this then I'm going to take my chain notes and I'm going to make three wraps, or at least I'm going to try to make three wraps. We'll see, because this is a big bead. I might only get two, but I'm going to try to do three. Oops, it's getting away. It's getting away. I'm planning on cutting that little chain off. You will see. Okay, I'm just finished wrapping this around. This is the trickiest part right here, is doing this one pin. Yeah, I have to I have to use this whole pin for this bead because it's the largest bead. Okay, now my wraps are kind of far apart, so I'm going to go like this and scooch them down. 
and I gotta tell you, the best way to get this wire to go all the way around is to use um, crimping tools. And I like to use my old crimping tools for this. But um, right now, mine aren't out, so I'm doing it this way. I can come back to this later and and uh, fix that wire there so it's not sticking out. Just gonna cut what what's there to just hold them out. Okay, slide this bead down. I'm gonna cut this ball off my pin now, and then I'm going to make another wrapped loop. And since I'm working with chain that is um, unsoldered, I don't have to put it on right now. I can do it later. And I do make my loops go in different directions because I don't know what it is, but rosary necklaces are made like this and they never get tangled. It is incredible. Okay, make my bend, make my loop. Do I have more wire in this side? How is that even possible? It's possible. I guess. I don't know how I did that. I barely had wire on the other side. Okay. Finish wrapping this. And then I'm going to cut the wire. And we're going to do the chain okay let's see looks good okay I'm gonna cut this chain off you can open it if you want but it's a struggle it really is getting in there so I'm gonna cut right here there we go now I have just this bead okay I have to do the same thing to this side but I'm gonna go ahead and do this a little bit with you guys I'm going to I'll take this one it's already open I'm taking and attaching three links of chain to this here what I do open a link put the chain on and then I count three links one two three I open the fourth link and I remove the fourth link just like that I'm going to do another bead and some of you might think why don't you just cut this ball off here make the wrapped eye pin and then put the bead on and then make a, a loop over here well my method to this is I put the bead on okay and then I take my pliers and I go like this and I center the bead because I want my wraps to be even on each side so I go like this center the bead okay then I can bend this here and this way I get the same amount of wraps on each side of my bead this is the method to my madness okay wrap this three times One more. Cut this off. Since this bead's smaller, it's easier to um, get 
get three wraps quickly because the wire is longer. Slide that up. And like I told you guys earlier, if you make your loops go in different directions, just like it is in um, rosary necklaces, it's so much easier. It, it prevents the chain from tangling with itself. Now, if you do have them accidentally going in the same direction, you just grab them like this and you twist it. You can easily fix it. You just have to bend it. Okay, straighten up my loop here because it's crooked. And there we go on this one. And you know what? I should have opened the third link earlier instead of opening the fourth link because I have to open the third link right now. And I could have saved myself some time. Opening this up. Putting on my new link. Really, I did not open the link far enough. Good grief. Putting on my bead. And twisting this shut. And there we go. So I have to keep doing this. Added beading, beaded links. I'm going to do red next. And then I'm going to do my uh, picture jasper. And then the yellow one. So I'm going to keep going doing this. And I'll show you what it looks like when I get done. I'm back and I finished my bead links. And I also put a lobster call clasp in each one. And I had these tag things that I put in. But I don't know if I should stay with those. Because they are thin. And if this link were to ever split open. Even just a little bit. The tag would slide right out of it. So um, I might do a uh, split ring in there but um I am really happy with how these turned out I tried them on they look better on than they do laying down so I have to go take pictures it's fixing to get dark and it's been raining all day so wish me luck I hope you guys enjoyed this video please like this video leave me a comment subscribe if you want to see more of my videos make sure you click the bell button so you get notified when I upload a new video and check me out on all my social media sites I'm on Facebook Instagram Pinterest and Twitter thanks for watching